You said you're dead in the apartment? They're dead. How many people? Right now, I only see two. I didn't go all the way in, but my son is one of them. There are thousands of 911 calls happening every day, but a few of them are so tense that if you hear them, they become a part of your nightmares for months. The following content may be disturbing to some individuals. You've been warned. Hi there, I'm Angie, and without further ado, let's start with number 3. A woman trapped in burning home. A 76-year-old woman named Loretta Picard called 911 when she first noticed smoke coming from her log house in Lakeland, Florida. After giving all the necessary information, she made it clear to the dispatcher that she could not leave her house, since she was on a walker and she was alone in the house with nobody to help her. Let's have a listen. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Okay, in what city? Okay. All right, and what is the phone number you're calling from? Okay, tell me exactly what happened. I think my house is on fire, and I'm here alone, and I'm on a walker. Hurry up. Okay, they, these, these questions are not going to delay paramedics in any way. Okay, what type of building is involved? It's a log house with a tin roof. But it's coming from the roof, I think. I don't know. Okay, how many floors okay. are, how many floors or stories are there? Well, there's just one floor. We got an attic. Okay, is anyone trapped inside the building? Well, I'm inside the house. I don't even know if I can get out. I mean, my husband's at the ball game and I can't get him. I'll try his cell phone. Okay, exactly where are you located? Uh no, inside the home. Exactly where are you located oh, inside right the now home? I'm in, right now I'm in the living room. After a few minutes and some more information given about the house, the dispatcher starts to give instructions to Loretta on what to do and advises her to leave the house if possible, without caring anything. For a second time you can hear the old woman saying that it's not possible to do so in her condition. Smoke's getting bad. Okay, if it's safe to do so, leave the building, close the doors behind you, and remain outside. Do not try to put the fire out. Do not carry anything. Do not carry out anything that's on fire. I couldn't, honey, if I wanted to. I'm on a walker, and I can't hardly walk. <laughs> After a few moments, the dispatcher tries again to give instructions to Loretta, but she isn't able to follow them. While on her walker, and then something suddenly happens that scares the old woman. Okay, is anyone injured? No, I'm the only one here. I'm not injured, but my eyes are full of smoke. My lungs, I can't get out the door. Stay low to the floor. Close the door immediately. Um, all right, cover it. Get down to the floor, honey. Okay. I'll sit on my walker. That's the lowest I can get. Oh, what is that? What's going on? I don't know. Don't hit me on the head. The smoke continues to fill the house and Loretta can barely talk without coughing. We're now more than 10 minutes into the call and the dispatcher reassures her for the hundredth time that the firefighters are close, but Loretta doesn't see them and starts panicking. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I shouldn't be panicking. Okay, just let me know what's going on, okay? Okay. I'm going to get a chair where I can sit in. I can walk around. It's kind of way away from me. Just let me I feel know. like a big baby. No, it's okay. It's, <laughs> is, is, all, is the smoke still in the home? Yes, like, are you still filling up? Okay, but you don't see any flames at this time? I can't go outside to see. Yes, but there's no flames in the home that you can see? No, not in the house. I can see the smoke. Okay. Pictures, here they come. I hear, it. I hear the sirens. Okay, just I'm staying on the line with you until they get right there with you, okay? Yes. Oh, I'm so, I forgot it's, that. It's okay. Oh, I don't care. Do you still hear the sirens? No. The smoke gets so bad that Loretta can't even see anything except from the flames, 
that are now visible from the living room where she is resting. You can hear the scary sounds from the burning house and the old woman panicking once again since the firefighters are on the scene, but no one is coming to help her. Oh no, I can't even see you near. Okay, are you still, you're still in a dining room chair? Yes. Okay. But it's getting really hot in here. Oh, oh, I see fire now. Okay. Are you here? Yes, they're, me. they're here. They're there. They're there. I'm letting them know exactly what's going on, okay? They are there. Okay. They, I promise they are right there. It's just they have to uh, make their way into you, okay? Okay, but they better run. <laughs> the rest audio footage is the most disturbing part. You can hear the fire burning through everything, and Loretta screaming for help at the firefighters. The dispatcher is trying to reassure her that help is coming, even at the moment that it seems the poor woman is on fire. That was the last time we get to hear Loretta on the audio footage. For the rest of the 10-minute call, you can only hear the dispatcher trying to get an answer, but to no avail. Hello? 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 Loretta, who was recovering from a recent hip surgery, died in that fire. Her family is seeking justice after they claim firefighters didn't try to save their aunt. Amber Addison, Picker's niece, claims several policies were broken, which led to the woman's death. These violated policies include a social media policy that was violated when a firefighter captain, James Williams, took out his phone and decided to videotape the burning home on Snapchat. Number 2. Chilling call during a home invasion A mother with her three children were watching TV at around 11 p.m. in Sharon, Massachusetts, during a snowstorm, when a man burst through the door holding a knife and started throwing things while threatening that he'd kill them all. The children ran and hid upstairs in a closet while the man attacked their mother with a glass frame. In the following audio footage, you can hear a call made by the daughter inside the closet. 911 recorded line, what is your emergency? Sharon, this is State 911, it's 140 Billing Street, intruder in the house attacking the mother with a stapler. I have a caller on the line inside the house with you. Okay, thank you. Hello? Hi. Sharon, police, what can I do for you? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> There's a man in the He came in. He said he wanted us to remove ourselves. He started throwing things. Okay. My mom was. All right. All right. My mom's okay. I don't know how to go down there. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Neely Fishbeeler, but I'm the daughter. Do you know my parents' name? Mary, what? Neely. Seconds later, after the first call, another one was made, this time by the mother, who is crying hysterically as a man screams in the background. Hold on a minute. Is somebody else on the phone down there? Is someone else trying to call the police down there? Maybe my daughter is. I don't know. All right. Well, you need to have her hang up if if I got you on the phone. I'm bleeding. Can you move? But we're sending help right away. Yes, 
140 Billing Street for the South in Progress. Reported. Did you say he had a knife, ma'am? What? Does he have a knife or a weapon? I don't know. I know whether there's a weapon available or not, sir. I don't know. Please, 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 please. Yep, they're on their way. They're on their way. Hold on. Hold on and tell them what you can tell them, okay? The ambulance will be coming. Thankfully, only a few moments after the second call, a patrol officer arrived and arrested the enraged man. You can hear him upon arriving to the bedroom through the call. The suspect, Ricardo Francis, age 39, of Boston, is charged with armed home invasion and multiple felony charges. He was also ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. Police said there doesn't appear to be any connection between Francis and the victims, other than the fact that his car ran off the road in the snow and struck a vehicle located at the end of their driveway. Francis wasn't making any sense. He kept saying it was his home and making threats. Then, after hitting the mother, he took out a knife and followed the children upstairs and started stabbing the bedroom door. The mother needed stitches but has since returned home. The three children weren't harmed. Number 1. Mother finds her son dead. The following 911 call was made by Mrs. Hall Porter upon arriving in a Gwinnett apartment complex and finding her son and his friend dead. At first, the dispatcher tries to understand what happened while the frantic woman explains how she got there. Have a listen. Gwinnett County 911, what is the location of your emergency? 1400 Harrington Road, Lawrenceville, Georgia. What apartment number? 5302. 5302? Yes. Okay. What's going on there, ma'am? I just found, I got a call at work that there was a shooting that my son was involved in, and I just arrived at this location. There's no police here, and they are dead in the apartment. You said I just car. Now it's gone. It's not a cop here. And they said the police was notified. Okay. I just left my job and I come here and the door is open. And then, yeah. <laughs> I am sure the police have been notified they are on the way. You said they're dead in the apartment? They're dead. How many people? Right now, I only see two. I didn't go all the way in, but my son is one of them. Okay. <laughs> The woman explains that someone called her while she was at her job and informed her that her son was involved in a shooting. That made her believe that the police were already at the scene, but instead, she found out that no one was there and the door to the apartment was just left open by whoever did this. <laughs> right, what is your name, ma'am? My name is Dawn, D-A-W-N. What is your last name, Dawn? H-A-L-L hyphen P-O-R-T-E-R. Where are you at right now, Dawn? I'm standing in front of the building. Once I, my son pushed the door open and we could see the bodies and we turned around and called 911 because somebody called me at work and told me my son was involved in a shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my manager's permission to leave and me and my son just came. They gave us the address and everything and we just arrived here thinking the police would be here to find out what's going on. No cops are here. We go and knock on the door, but when he went to knock the door, pushed open and you could see the bodies there. Okay. Is your son still outside with you? The one that my other up. son that's with yes. me, but my, my other son is laying up there shot. I've, and I've got paramedics and police both coming out there, I understand. Okay, and your other son's outside with you, though, right? Yeah, he okay. left his job in Alpharetta and came and picked me up because I was too hysterical to drive. And then I get here thinking that I'll find out what's going on and there's no cop here or anything whatsoever. I don't believe this. So within the time that I got this phone call, you tell me no cops have been here, that anybody could just go up there, push the door open and see these bodies laying there. <laughs> the call ends when the first police officers arrive at the scene. I got 
gotta hang up. The cops are here. Okay. After the detectives and crime scene personnel arrived at the home, they found that Corey Moss, age 22, and Stacy Hall, age 24, had died of gunshot wounds. It's been over four years, and no suspects have been charged in this crime, according to police. If you'd like to watch more, you can check my five cold cases recently solved video, and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.